Well, in my life, I've had two big coming outs. My first coming out was hard enough for my parents, but hey, you could still date a doctor. <laughs> but turning down your grandmother's brisket because you're a vegetarian, that was a real sin. First of all, I want to explain what meat meant to my Jewish parents. My family was matzo ball soup and brisket Jewish. We were platters of pickles, white fish, and corned beef after a bris, Jewish. My dad's side was chased out of Russia. Mom's side survived the concentration camps. Meat was a metaphor for the triumph of the Jewish people over all their suffering. We ate meat because Hitler would not want us to eat meat. Every roast beef sandwich was a brick removed from an Auschwitz crematorium. The gravy-soaked turkey was a shield for our Russian ancestors against the pogroms. Every globule of fat dripping off the steaks was an opus, praising the bravery of the Warsaw Ghetto. My family had a love affair with all things dead. <laughs> Cooked and served on a platter with a side of kogel because that how is we celebrated our survival. Some of my earliest memories are of my mother removing from the kitchen asking, who wants to eat the pulky? My brothers would fight and snarl over the chicken neck, and I thought, ew, that's a chicken neck. <laughs> Just like later on, I thought, ew, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to carve all the fat and gristle off the lamb chops, getting it down to one tiny bite while everyone else slurped the marrow out of the bones. <laughs> Mommy, were these the same lambs we took pictures with at the petting zoo? <laughs> no, they're different lambs. <laughs> but I was onto something. I was always the odd one out, much like my brother, when my brother and father were screaming at any sporting event while I'd be coloring strawberry shortcake. <laughs> or the unfairness of the underwear ads I was forced to masturbate to. while my brothers had easy access to the porn my father clumsily hid. <laughs> Later on, I discovered the poorly written gay penthouse stories in the back of the magazine. The pizza guy expected a tip, but I was broke, so I gave him a different kind of tip. <laughs> the tip of my penis. <laughs> but it was what I had. <laughs> So we also kept kosher, which meant that we had separate dishes and utensils for meat and milk, except for glass, because somehow that's magical according to God. <laughs> it's a little gay. <laughs> if I committed the atrocity of touching a meat fork to dairy, my mother would purify it by placing it in the dirt of one of our indoor plants. I think this originated in Poland where you would stick it in the ground outside your door because, hey, who had dishwashers? <laughs> my friends asked me if my mother was trying to grow a fork bush. <laughs> this all made little sense to me, just like the idea of eating meat as a whole, or why the boys in my Archie comics wanted to stare at girls on the beach instead of the seagulls or, hey, shirtless volleyball players. The last time I ate chicken was at Kosher Delight, the McDonald's of kosher restaurants. <laughs> kosher and delight are two words that should never be used together. <laughs> but I never got to order fast food growing up. McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell, all forbidden by Jewish law. So this was my participation trophy. I bit into the chicken nugget and I found a chewy chunk of something. It was gummy and gristly. I thought a beak, a foot, an undeveloped, malformed chicken fetal twin. And then I recalled a PETA sticker with the slogan, I am not a nugget, showing an adorable baby chick. And I thought, correct chick, you are not a nugget. And you are certainly not a kosher chicken nugget. And that was the last time I ate poultry. I realized it was time to finally tell my parents the awful truth. It was time to come out of the meat locker as a vegetarian. <laughs> During my first coming out, when I told my parents I was gay, my mother didn't accept it. Don't worry, you'll meet a nice Jewish girl and have six babies and become a rabbi. It's been my dream. 
And later on, she told me I still have to only date Jews, which I'd never done. <laughs> Similarly, when I told her I didn't eat meat, she explained that the chicken soup is vegetarian if you just fish out the chicken. <laughs> Then she slowly moved on, as Jewish mothers do, to a subtle but reluctant, if not passive-aggressive, acceptance. She tried to appease me when I would visit home for the holidays by explaining that we brought, it, we brought you something to eat. It's a kosher $13 vegetarian meal, and it was very expensive. <laughs> I would smirk and smile, pretending I enjoyed the salt-filled, stale MSG mess. Massive family feasts were prepared with brisket and chicken and steak and gravy, and I would get my sad little side salad. <laughs> Finally, my parents embraced it in their own way. My mother began making flavorless soups and vegetarian beef cholent. She learned foreign words like vegan. <laughs> vegan. Vegan. My mother would call me to explain that there was a gay man on Oprah yelling at women about their hair. Did I know him? <laughs> <laughs> they took me to vegetarian restaurants and faked it. Mmm, it's just as good as meat. Isn't that right, Norman? Norman, tell him it's delicious. <laughs> My father, the butcher, nodded. Long ago, Roger was right to have an opinion that didn't come from her first. My mother still occasionally tricks me into going to kosher restaurants, like Meat Point, noting that they have delicious hummus, and I didn't drive, so I had no choice. <laughs> and when we get together, I know I'm missing out. I'll eat my sides while relatives talk past me to ask my brother if he's met a nice girl yet on J-Date. I shove my iceberg lettuce around and pretend it doesn't bother me, but it does. Part of the ritual of my family gets lost, and I'm the outsider. But I know they've accepted me for what I am, their only son with a job and without a drug problem. <laughs> I may be gay, but I've always taken care of myself. And after all, outsiders are the ones who grow up to be the independent ones. Sure, I'll never give them a huge roast beef carving station at my wedding while my father dances with my Jewish bride. <laughs> I might end up with a gluten-free, organic, vegan wedding in the forest with my current partner, Eric over there, to embarrass him, <laughs> who actually asked me if I got circumcised at my bar mitzvah. I may suck all the dick, fuck all the ass, and get as far away from my mother's idealized dream as I can. But she can take solace in the fact that I'll never, even in times of utter distress, even if I was starving in spite of all the peer pressure, let a piece of bacon touch my lips. <laughs> and I think maybe that's enough for her. Put your hands together for Leo Deckelbaum. <laughs> <laughs>